If you missed the first section, don't worry about it. Uh, you can go back and watch part one or two or three or whatever out of order. It doesn't matter. I split these segments up into sections that are independent of each other. So don't sweat it if you didn't see the others first. So I figure we just continue listening to Kent Hovind here and see what he has to say. I'm going to continue now talking about the Garden of Eden and what it was like. On seminar part 2B here, we're going to talk about the cavemen and quite a few other topics. The Bible says in Genesis 1, God would said, I'm going to make man in his own image. If we're made in the image of God, why do we teach the kids? Grandpa was an ape. Now, because that's scientifically accurate. Grandpa was not, uh, well, Grandpa was an ape. Uh, Grandpa was not a monkey like he's, like, you know, um, like he's portraying here. That's not actually accurate, but he desperately wants to make this seem absolutely ridiculous when it's not. I mean, what he's doing here really is spreading conspiracy theories, right? I, I feel comfortable saying that at this point. Grandpa was an ape. Now, evolution teaches we're getting better and someday we're going to become God. The facts are... No, I, I don't think... No, evolution doesn't teach anything. It certainly doesn't dictate or say that we are going to become gods or anything like that. I guess you could say if we, this is as close to gods as humans will ever get, I believe, because we have consciousness and we can think and rationalize and stuff like that. That is truly incredible, the fact that we evolved that ability to think, to be self-aware, aware that we are aware. Truly incredible. Truly incredible. Um, can't beat that, really. You, you really cannot. You can't beat that. We're getting worse. Things are falling apart. We now have an incredible genetic load. We are mentally and physically deficient compared to Adam and Eve. Things are not getting better. But we all teach the kids in the textbooks, this is Grandpa. Yeah, I, I would just want to point out there's no evidence that we're getting smarter and there's no evidence that we're getting stupider. We are just as smart and just as stupid as a human species as we were 10,000 years ago. Uh, Kent desperately wants it to look like there's a difference. It really isn't. What's the truth about the cavemen? Is it possible for an ape-like creature to turn to a human? Oh my God, another Bill Clinton joke. He takes a picture of an ape and slowly morphs it into Bill Clinton like Animorphs, which is popular at this time. Ridiculous. <laughs> the dude really, really hates Democrats and has since the late 90s at the very least. People are clapping for this. He just put up a picture of Bill Clinton morphing from an ape to Bill Clinton himself. What the hell? Like, it wasn't that funny, people. Well, it depends what you mean by caveman, okay? There are people today who live in caves, okay? We don't call them half ape, half human. There's the world's most wanted caveman right there, Osama bin Laden. Okay. Uh, they weren't half ape and half human back then either. They were all human up until about 100,000 years ago. But I assume what he's talking about is, uh, you know, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and my favorite Homo of, of all, which is Homo, hyper, uh, homo heidelbergensis. Um, I love that Homo. It's my best. It's the best one out of any Homos. And if you disagree with me, then you're simply wrong. Anyways, uh, those all existed a million years ago to 100,000 years ago, I believe. I'm not exactly sure when the first early Homo species appeared. Um, you know what? I, why am I wondering? I just loaded up my question gun. Let's go answer hunting. We've got the Google machine, the electric Google machine, right? 300,000 years ago, I guess, is when the first Homo sapiens appeared in Africa, great ape ancestors uh, speciate from the ancestors of the gibbon, uh, lesser apes, between 20 to 16 million years ago. They largely reduced their ancestral snout. Hominini. Wow, dude. I think Hominini might be my next favorite. It sounds like Panini. 
So my favorite, wait, is that a homo species or no? Latest common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees, estimated to live between roughly 10 to 5 million years ago. Um, okay, early homo appears in East Africa, speciating from Australopithecine ancestors. This is two and a half to two million years ago. Sophisticated stone tools mark the beginning of the lower Paleolithic. Australopithecus garhi was using stone tools about two and a half million years ago. Homo habilis is the oldest species given the designation Homo by Leakey et al. 1964. H. habilis is intermediate between Australopithecus afarensis and Homo erectus, which means it stood upright. That's what erectus means. And there have been suggestions to reclassify it within genus Australopithecus as Australopithecus habilis. Fascinating. So here's the answer. Roughly two to two and a half million years ago is, is, was the first homo species. Uh, the first one that kind of matches human whatever, like matches humanity or, or whatever you want to call it. That's like our, our early ancestor, basically. So there's your answer. Um, we were never half ape, half man. We slowly and gradually evolved into something new. And as I said, I think... My favorite homo is Homo heidelbergensis. Love the name. Absolutely love it. Just try saying it. Try saying the word. Hominini is good. But heidelbergensis, no better homo on the planet. There's a former caveman. <clears throat> Saddam Hussein. Uh, I, I think that this is after Saddam Hussein was captured. You know, I'm not a fan of him making fun of this situation. Um, whatever. I think someone's trying to make a monkey out of us. Was your ancestor an ape-like creature? I don't think so. Let's talk. Yes. Yes. Our ancestors were ape-like creatures. As a matter of fact, we know that without a shadow of a doubt. Um, he really does not like Na National Geographic, though. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this joke from him, but he calls it National Pornographic. I don't know why. Uh, I guess because it has, like, explicit photos sometimes from, like, ancient tribes or whatever else. I just... He needs to get over himself, dude. It's educational. Yeah, Kent Hovind tells on himself a lot. Agreed. All right, let's keep listening. Like creature? I don't think so. Let's talk about a few of the so-called cavemen. We could spend hours on this topic, but we got more to cover here. Uh, Nebraska man was used for years as evidence for evolution. All they found for Nebraska man was one tooth. That is the entire Nebraska man right there. Uh, this tooth is from the same jaw as the original Nebraska man. Is it the? It is the evidence of. Wait, it is in the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. Like I said, doubt everything that he says, especially if it's coming from like a creationist source. Although there have been hoaxes and stuff. And when the hoaxes are discovered, they don't double or triple down on those hoaxes. Science doesn't. They get that they exercise those hoaxes from the movement. They remove it completely. Uh, I don't know about Nebraska man specifically. I'm unfamiliar. That may be because science has removed it entirely from, you know, like from the scientific process, from whatever. Like, I haven't even read about Nebraska Man. I think I've heard about it because I'm in the debunking creationist circles. But science says absolutely nothing about Nebraska Man as far as I know. And as Robert Adset says, it was never used as evidence for evolution. It was never accepted as legitimate and also, there's a ton of other evidence for evolution anyways. Okay, so this is a Nebraska man uh, Wikipedia page. Nebraska man was a name applied to Hesperopithecus, hurdle something or other, a putative species of ape. It was heralded as the first higher uh, it was heralded as the first higher primate of North America. It was originally described by Henry Fairfield Osborne in 1922 on the basis of a tooth found by rancher and geologist Harold Cook in Nebraska in 1917. 
Although Nebraska Man was not a deliberate hoax, the original classification proved to be a mistake and was retracted in 1927. How about that? Scientists discovered that it was a mistake and retracted it a few years later. Looks like 10 years later. No, uh, five years later, I'm sorry. They retracted it five years after it was classified that way. And how far back do creationists have to go to prove, quote-unquote, that evolutionists are lying? Uh, this is a, a faulty classification, not a lie, not a hoax. And they had to go all the way back to 1927 to find an example of it. How about that? Publication and retraction. In February 1922, Harold Cook wrote to Dr. Henry Osborne to inform him of a tooth that he had in his possession for some time. The tooth had been found years prior to the Upper Snake Creek bed. I'm sorry, years prior in the Upper Snake Creek beds of Nebraska, along with other fossils typical of North America. Osborne received the specimen in March 1922 and quickly set out to identify it. Osborne, along with William D. Matthew, soon came to the conclusion that the tooth had belonged to an arthropod ape. They then passed the tooth along to William Gregory and Dr. Milo Hellman, who agreed that the tooth belonged to an arthropod ape more closely related to humans than other apes. Only a few months later, an article was published in Science announcing the discovery of a man-like ape in North America. Yeah, like I said, this is literally 100 years ago. You had to go back 100 years to find an example of a mistaken identity or whatever else. I'm sure he's going to come up with others because there have been a couple of specific intentional hoaxes out there. Uh, doesn't disprove evolution as much as you want it to. Does not disprove evolution. Evolution is one of the most well-researched and most solid facts in all of science. Nebraska man was used for years as evidence for evolution. All the no, it wasn't. Nebraska man was not used as evidence of evolution. Um, it was used as evidence that there were human-like creatures in North America at a certain time. That's it. It was not evidence of evolution. Nebraska man was one <clears throat> tooth. That is the entire Nebraska man right there. One tooth. Then they built an entire man from that one tooth and later made him a wife. Now you have to really be good to know what his wife looks like from his tooth. I have no idea what they're talking about or what he's talking about here. I didn't see anything about a wife in the article that I was reading about it. But, okay, go on. Okay, but these are professionals. Don't question them, okay? They know what they're talking about. Later they found out the tooth actually came from a pig. Yeah, this is, again, 1927. This is 100 years old. He's pretending that this just happened like three years ago or something. Scientists proved that it was inaccurate in 1927. And again, it was not used as evidence of evolution. There's the real Nebraska man right there. How about Piltdown Man, named after the gravel pit it was found in in Piltdown, England. Somebody took a human skull and an ape's jaw. They filed them down and fooled everybody. Oh, yeah. Isn't this one? I believe this was actually an intentional hoax. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was an intentional hoax. Somebody was trying to trick other people. And it turned out they, they discovered that it was a hoax and they removed any references to Piltdown Man or whatever else. Piltdown Man was a paleoanthropological fraud in which bone fragments were presented as fossilized remains of a previously unknown early human. Although there were doubts about its authenticity virtually from the beginning, the remains were still broadly accepted for many years, and the falsity of the hoax was only definitively demonstrated in 1953. Again, 75 years ago. Of course, Kent's whole thing came out in 2005, I believe, so I guess you could say 50 years previously, give or take. In 1912, Charles Dawson claimed that he had discovered the missing link between ape and man. In February 1912, Dawson contacted Arthur Smith Woodward, keeper of geology at the Natural History Museum, stating he found a section of a human-like skull in uh, Ply Pleistocene gravel beds near Piltdown, East Sussex. That summer, Dawson and Smith Woodward purportedly discovered more bones and artifacts at the site, which they can which they connected to the same individual. 
These finds included a jawbone, more skull fragments, a set of teeth, and primitive tools. Anyways, point is, yeah, that one was a deliberate hoax. Uh, but guess what? It was discovered. It was figured out, and it was never used as evidence of evolution. 1912, they discovered the Piltdown Man. It was in the New York Times. Darwin theory proved true. Again, they didn't need that to prove the theory of evolution. The theory of evolution has been proven like a billion times over in a thousand different ways. This is just one more example of evolution in action, but they discovered somebody was playing a trick on them, and they removed it from any references. From the Piltdown Man. It was going to be used in 1925 at the Scopes Monkey Trial as part of the evidence for evolution. Uh, what? I mean, is that true? I, I deeply doubt it. The entire court case is available from Bryan College. You can call Bryan College here once again. Should we give them a call? For a good, ex for a good expose of the errors in the movie Inherit, it, the, Inherit the Wind, call George Sorrell. Why would I call any of these people? Christ School Road, art in North Carolina? Obviously, all of the sources he's listed here are like Christian sources. What is Bryan College? Bryan College, private Christian liberal arts college in Dayton, Tennessee. How about that? How about that? In court, the entire court case is available from a Christian college. You can call a Christian college to receive this court case. Totally, totally trustworthy, absolutely. Give me something better than that, Kent. I need more than the words of your friends. I need actual evidence. <clears throat> the judge said, the question is not, is there evidence for evolution? The question is, did he violate the law of teaching? So he was found guilty of breaking the law. The teacher was John T. Scopes down here in Dayton, Tennessee. But Piltdown Man was a hoax. Somebody had taken an ape's jawbone and a human skull, broke the uh, TMJs off, made them fit together, and fooled everybody, filed the teeth down. Yeah, I don't, don't trust Kent in the way he's describing this. I know it seems like an innocuous little thing, how he's describing what he did to do this hoax or whatever. Even little things cannot be trusted from Kent. What we do know is that Piltdown Man was a hoax. For 40 years, it was in the textbooks as proof for evolution. No, they wouldn't use that as proof for evolution. We have plenty of other proof for evolution. The things that you need for evolution to be a fact, or the fact that it is, are genetic mutations, gene duplication, and natural selection. Why would I take a caveman as evidence for evolution? That, that doesn't verify any of those three pillars was in the textbooks as proof for evolution. It was a fraud, exposed as a fraud. So I guess what he's trying to prove here is that there were no cavemen, ever, any. Cavemen are fake. Is that what he's trying to imply? I mean, we have tons and tons and tons of examples of quote-unquote cavemen, as he would call it. I don't understand where his head's at if he wants to make the claim that cavemen are fake, but he's only giving us two examples of, he gave us one example of a mistaken classification, one example of a hoax, and he's claiming that all examples of quote unquote cavemen are fake. I mean, am I reading this correctly? Is, is that what he's doing here? Is what it seems like to me. 1953. Neanderthal man is still in your textbooks, used in your town here in Knoxville, Tennessee. But it's been proven years ago, it cannot possibly be a missing link. Neanderthal man? More than 300 Neanderthals have been found. I believe it's pronounced Neanderthal. And uh, they were, from my understanding, Neanderthals were, uh, they actually lived alongside humans. They were not humans exactly and what does he mean they've been proven fake what they've been proven fake in what way neanderthal man is still in your textbooks used in your town here in knoxville tennessee but it's been proven years ago it cannot possibly be a missing link that's correct it's i don't believe it's a missing link to humans there is no missing link we have a billion links from one species to the next to the next 
I mean, I mentioned my favorite homo earlier, Heidelbergensis. That's a link. From, it's a transition from our earliest ancestors to now. It's one of the many. There's, a, uh, there's one named Lucy. They named this link Lucy. It's in the Smithsonian, I think, maybe. It is a link between apes and humans. We don't have any missing links. I mean, I don't even know where this phrase missing link came from. There's probably an answer, and I should probably look it up, but I'm not going to. Long story. Uh, by the way, we have like a ton of Neanderthal DNA in our bodies. Like we can see examples of us crossbreeding with Neanderthals. We mated with Neanderthals. Missing link. Long story about the Neander Valley, named after Joachim Neander, that wrote the song in the songbook, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Great godly man. Well, back in 1856, they found a skeleton petrified, a man petrified, in this valley called the Neander Valley, and they named it Neanderthal Man. The back was bent over. Well, apes walk on four legs and man walks on two, so when the Darwin's theory became popular, they resurrected the Neanderthal Man and said, oh, wow, maybe he's slowly evolving, he's coming up. Well, they've never... Wow, dude, he's trying to disprove the existence of Neanderthals. We have conclusive evidence that Neanderthals are real. There is no question in anybody's mind, any scientist's mind. I wonder if Kent still rejects the idea of Neanderthals. From the very beginning, it was an old man with arthritis who's slowly going down. He's not coming up at all. He's headed down. But they still keep him in the textbooks. About 300 Neanderthals... That's because you don't understand what it actually is. Or you're twisting it out of proportion. He's not coming up at all. He's headed down. But they still keep him in the textbooks. About 300 Neanderthals have been found. Their brains are bigger than ours. Their bone structure was incredibly strong. They said they had so many muscles that the average Neanderthal could probably pick up the average NFL linebacker and fling him over the goalpost. Phenomenal strength in the Neanderthals. They gave the same skull to nine different artists and said, what did he look like in life? They got nine different answers. They said, what would you like him to look like? We're artists, you know, we can make him, you want him ape-like or human-like? You tell us what you... Okay, so wait, I need to step back and listen to this one more time. Hang on. Nine different artists and said, what did he look like? Hold on. They gave the same skull to nine different artists and said, what did he look like in life? They got nine different answers. They said, Who is they? Who are you talking about? This is called weasel words, by the way. I don't know if you guys have heard this term before, but it's a form of propaganda. Let me just look up the term. Um, a weasel word or anonymous authority is an informal term for words and phrases aimed at creating an impression that something specific and meaningful has been said when in fact only a vague or ambiguous claim has been communicated. Who is they? Who are you talking about, Kent? to nine different artists and said phenomenal strength in the Neanderthals. They gave the same skull to nine they. different artists and said, what did he look like in life? They got nine different answers. They said, what would you like him to look like? We're artists, you know, we can make him, you want him ape-like or human-like? You tell us what you want. We'll do it. Jack Cuazzo, a uh, friend of mine from New Jersey, has been a dentist for 32 years. He came and spoke at our conference uh, a few weeks ago at the boot camp we had <clears throat> in Pensacola. He studied the actual Neanderthal skulls in Europe. He said, these Neanderthals are just perfectly normal humans that are living to really great age. See, before the flood came, the people lived to be 900. After the flood, lifespans dropped off to 400, and then 200, and then 100. But that's still a long time to live. And it's a simple fact, the bones of your eyebrow ridge never stop growing. What? Is that true? Or is he making that up? Do eyebrow bones stop growing? I'm trying to find an answer to this, but it's kind of a weird, specific question. Uh, what age does your face stop growing? The face and its total physical body never stops growing, according to this random person on the internet. Uh, do facial bones keep growing after puberty? Um... Our face bones change, uh, change shape as we age. I can find that in some kind of a scientific context, but every other question or comment here is from some randos on the internet. Now Cloud's going through, like, his consciousness is floating through something or other. 
and meeting Sephiroth on an ethereal plane, I, I guess. And Cloud stares on as the life stream engulfs him. Nifty stuff, man. Nifty stuff. Ridge never stopped growing. So if you could live to be three or four hundred years old, your eyebrow ridge would stick way out. I have no idea what he's talking about. Facial bones, as far as I can tell, unverified. I believe facial bones continue to grow uh, to some degree or change at the very least. Eyebrow ridges specifically? No. Um, whether you like this or not, Kent, uh, Neanderthals are real. They are, period. People today that use their jaws a lot, like the Aborigines in Australia are always using their jaws as a vice. They don't carry a toolbox with them. Their eyebrow ridge sticks out really far because of the chewing muscles. It pulls on the bone. Yeah, he's just making this up. There's absolutely no evidence. Or he's provided absolutely no evidence for this. The Neanderthals are perfectly normal human that are living to be two or three hundred years old. That's all they are. No. That is so beyond ridiculous, I don't even know what to do with it. Their brain's bigger than ours. They're not subhuman at all. They're just really old human. That's true. Their brains were bigger than ours. That's, uh, but brain size does not dictate intelligence. It doesn't tell us that they're smarter than us because their brains are bigger. I mean, I have to imagine T-Rex brains are bigger than ours. Elephant brains are certainly bigger than human brains. doesn't make them smarter or stupider or whatever else. I believe it's based on, it's based on a completely different set of uh, measurements than brain size. There's an aborigine on the far left over there. See the eyebrow ridge sticking out? That's from chewing. He's just making this up. Or using your jaw muscles a lot. There are a lot of different shapes of head. You could line up the folks in Knoxville, Tennessee and prove evolution just by the shape of the skull. No. Um, we have proven evolution without a shadow of a doubt. It has nothing to do with, quote-unquote, shape of the skull or any of that stuff. We prove evolution through gene duplication, mutation, and selection. <laughs> and drive downtown. You'll see what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> Here's Cro-Magnon Man, still used in the textbooks, yet it's perfectly normal human. Why on earth is that considered a missing link? Uh, so it looks like we beat Final Fantasy VII. Since I beat Final Fantasy VII once again, I think I'm going to play Mario Maker 2 for a little while. I'm on Endless Easy because I don't have to focus on what's happening on Mario Maker while I talk about Kent, so... Uh, I don't want to, like, struggle to think about what's happening in the game while listening to, you know, while debunking people, basically. So that's what I'm doing. Anyway, let's keep listening to uh, Kent Hovind. Uh, I think w with Kent Hovind, we left off. He said Cro-Magnon is modern in every respect. It's just a human, a normal Homo sapiens or whatever. So I was looking that up here. Uh, Cro-Magnon is a hominid of tall, erect race of the Upper Paleolithic known from, skeletal, uh, known from skeletal remains found chiefly in southern France, classified as the same species, Homo sapiens, as present-day humans. That's true, I guess. Yes, that is, uh, yes, that is accurate. Cro-Magnon is classified as the same species, Homo sapiens. Cro-Magnon seems to be Homo sapiens, but they classified it differently because it's an example of early... European modern humans uh, so it's not really an example of like a different species it's not used as evidence of evolution cavemen are not used as evidence of evolution they never were they never have been they, they just aren't evolution evidence for evolution is completely separate from cavemen so I guess Cro-Magnon isn't it isn't really be, being used as evidence of evolution it's just evidence that there were early humans in Europe. That's it. Although I'm guessing, let, wait, let me find out. When was Cro-Magnon? When was Cro-Magnon? When was the Cro-Magnon era? <clears throat> Cro-Magnon was from the Paleolithic period, the Upper Paleolithic period, which is 40,000 to 10,000 years ago in Europe. That's why Kent Hovind is attacking the idea of Cro-Magnon, because Cro-Magnon existed long before, like, he claims that Earth existed. 
Ken Tobin thinks Earth existed 6,000 years ago, and then the flood happened 4,200 years ago. Cro-Magnon's from 10,000 to 40,000 years ago. That's why he's criticizing Cro-Magnon. Yes, they are early humans, but they're from 10,000 to 40,000 years ago, a period that shouldn't exist in your theology. That's why he's attacking it. Not because of evolution, but because of, uh, but because of the age of the Earth, basically. They've got one in there called... Uh... Homo sapien is modern man. He's listed as Cro-Magnon. It's not modern. It's not a missing link at all. That's correct. It's not. Nobody ever claimed it was a missing link. Well, they've got in there now is called Australopithecus afarensis. That was proven wrong in eighteen. I mean, in nineteen seventy-three. Uh, no. Wow, that was an easy level. No, Australopithecus Afri African. Wait, Africanus? Is that what he said? Hang on, let me just step back a few seconds and listen to that one more time. Well, they've got in there now is called Australopithecus afarensis. No, that's Africanus. You're, you circled Africanus, not afarensis. They're totally different things. Afarensis. Yeah, he's calling it afarensis, not Africanus. He circled Africanus. If you look here on the, the big screen, I just switched screens so you can see, yeah. He circled Africanus, not Afarensis. They are different. Uh, Australopithecus Afarensis is from... Yeah, Afarensis is known as Lucy. It's one of the earliest missing links between humans and early apes. Uh, it was from 3.9 to 2.9 million years ago in the Pliocene of East Africa. Uh, but Africanus, what he just circled, that's different. That's from 3.67 to 2 million years ago in the Middle Pliocene and early uh, Pleistocene of South Africa. Hang on, I'm just reading about it here. Africanus is, uh, Africanus is currently the oldest known early human from South Africa. Uh, discovery date was 1924. It lived in Southern Africa, or South Africa, about 3.3 to 2.1 million years ago. That is very old. Holy shit. Males averaged 4 foot 6, and females averaged 3 foot 9. Wow, that is a huge height difference. Males averaged 90 pounds, females averaged 66 pounds. Very interesting. Uh, the Tong child found in 1924 was the first to establish that the early fossil humans occurred in Africa. It says here, Africanus were also fully rounded in the front like those of modern humans, and their canine teeth were smaller on average than those of Afarensis. So they are different species. Uh, I'm not sure why he's... I mean, is he conflating the two? Is he saying they're the same? They're not. That was proven wrong in 18, I mean, in 1973. No. See Bones of Contention by Marvin Lubnow, page 50. Who is Marvin Lubnow? Why should I care? Or Lubnow? See Omnology.com or Omniology? What is Omniology.com? Like, I've never heard of any of these sources. This is nonsense. 30 years ago, proven wrong. Why are they keeping that in the textbooks as evidence for evolution? The existence of these things were not proven wrong. These things existed. This is real. I'm sorry that you don't like that, Kent. That's just what it is, man. We have unrefuted evidence. I mean, you, you should always try to refute things, whether it's refutable or not, in my opinion. You should always be skeptical and ask questions and try to dig and find new information and all that stuff. None of this stuff has been refuted. This is all factual information, like Africanus and Afarensis existed, whether you like that or not, Kent. Sorry. Australopithecus Africanus, or Afarensis, better known as Lucy. How many have ever heard of Lucy before? Oh, see, interesting. So he got him confused originally, and now he's correcting his mistake. He was originally talking about Africanus, and now he's talking about Afarensis. For evolution. They've got Australopithecus africanus, or afarensis, better known as Lucy. How many have ever heard of Lucy before? Donald yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Lucy is real. Johansson found Lucy in 1974, Ethiopia. He had gone there with a grant 
to look for missing links. Somebody. Look, we, there are no missing links. We have links. We know exactly how all of this works. There are no, there's no such thing as a missing link. If you talk about a missing link, you just don't understand evolution. We have the missing links now. Gave him some money, said, here, go find a missing link. If you don't find one, no more money. Two weeks. Like, we are missing links. Everything is a missing link between, you know, the ape species and modern day humans. Everything is a link because that's how evolution works. Before his grant money. Ex Hold on. Don't find one, no more money. Two weeks before his grant money expired, he discovered Lucy. Highly motivated, I suspect. See, this is another part of his conspiracy. Everything is part of the conspiracy. He discovers something, well, it's because he had nefarious goals or because he wanted more money or something like that. It can never just be because somebody made this discovery. There has to be a conspiracy to it, always. And that would be a suspect, by the way, in a court of law, you know. Lucy was three feet tall. It was obviously a chimpanzee of some kind. Now, the bones of the skull were crushed thoroughly. Could not tell anything about the skull. But when they put it together for your kid's textbook, they can make it half human, half ape. Then it no, it, it wasn't half human, half ape. It was just a transition between apes and, and modern day humans. Modern day humans didn't appear basically until about 100,000 years ago, pretty much. This lived 3.9 million years ago, I believe. Um, it was not half human and half ape. It Lucy. I mean, the fact that he's even calling it half human and half ape tells me he does not understand the first thing about evolution. The fact that he's even using the term missing link tells me he doesn't understand evolution. There's no such thing as the missing link. But does he not understand it? Or does he fully understand it? And he's just coming up with the most ridiculous arguments he possibly can to try to discredit. Wow, I just, I can't believe I did that. To try to discredit evolution. I honestly think Kent Hovind knows. I really do. I think he knows. Because they were listening to the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. So let me step back a few seconds. Thoroughly could not tell anything about the skull. But when they put it together for your kid's textbook, they can make it half human, half ape. They named it Lucy because they were listening to the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah, that's the Beatles. The, the demographic of people that he's talking to right now is probably the type that hates the Beatles because they were you know, drug users, obviously, based on the fact that they sang about Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. If you're unfamiliar with that song or with the Beatles, it's referencing LSD, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, LSD, uh, acid. Um, they were talking about like an acid trip or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can totally see this group, this demographic of listeners that he's talking to in this church or whatever, being a little bit miffed at the idea that evolutionists were uh, named Lucy after a drug. They're uh, what do you call it? They're heathens. They're all heathens. Very popular back then, which, by the way, has the initials LSD, which they must have been on when they found this thing. But uh, See, he's pandering to this group of people who probably hates drugs, hates the Beatles, hates all of this stuff, and now hates evolution, too, because he just drew a link between them. Which, by the way, has the initials LSD, which they must have been on when they found this thing. But... Uh, the knee joint that was labeled Lucy's knee in National Pornographic, uh, Geographic. There you go. There's his joke about National Geographic. Uh, he says that in every single uh, like presentation that he does. He's always saying that exact joke. Like, it gets old, Kent. Come on, man. Ugh. It's a stupid joke anyways. Like, what's the point even? Just don't even bother, please. It's, it's cringy. It's actually found a mile and a half mm. away and 200 feet deeper. But National Geographic labeled it Lucy's knee. It's not Lucy's knee. It's a mile and a half away, for heaven's sake, okay? There's quite a controversy about that knee joint still. But this, the knee joint is the best evidence they have that Lucy was becoming a human. Because an ape has the lower and upper leg that are in a straight line with each other. A human leg goes up to your knee and angles off to the side because your hips are wider than your knees. 
Yeah, uh, Lucy was not, quote unquote, becoming a human. That's a complete misrepresentation and easily leads to misunderstanding the situation. <clears throat> His ad hominems are absolutely ridiculous. They aren't even funny. Agreed. Um, anyway, yeah, I like I've said a billion times already, do not trust his characterization of any of the information he's presenting. Don't trust any of the information he's presenting, period. Like, he is well known for lying about even the most innocuous stuff. Do not trust it. Once again, his source for this claim that he's making right now is omniology.com. I've never heard of this website, but let me just look it up real quick. Omniology.com. What is this? All right. Let, let's, let's pull this up real fast. Hang on. Okay, what do we got here? It looks like a 1990s website, honestly. Like, um, it looks like the Heaven's Gate website, to be perfectly frank. Uh, I mean, this is, I don't know if you guys remember Heaven's Gate. It's that, uh, it's that cult in the 90s who all checked out together. They believed there was a spaceship coming to pick them up behind the Hillbop comet. Hillbop brings closure to Heaven's Gate. Heavily influenced by Star Trek. Anyway, that, we're not talking about Heaven's Gate here. The point is, this Omniology website is very similar. All it needs is this cool, stellar background. That's all it needs to be pretty much the same. <clears throat> Welcome to the Omniol Omniological Society's California Institute of Omniology. What is Omniology? It's in the Urban Dictionary, apparently. The science of knowing everything beyond academic intellect and optimal development of the brain and its, adju uh, and its adjunct human body, knowing how, uh, knowing how to know. Okay. This website is dedicated to academic freedom, the free and open critical review, commentary, scholastic, and educational research of theoretical and empirical science. Okay. Warning. This website contains large graphic files that may take some time to load. If any pages stall in loading, click the refresh icon at the top of your web page. This should solve any problems. May the God of all truth richly bless you. This is weird, dude. This is... This is something else. This website. Oh my God. California Institute of Omniology holds to the fact that all theories of origins lacking empirical verification are metaphysical and religious in nature. Therefore, they require and deserve equal examination, evaluation, and critical review in the spirit of true academic freedom and science. Wow, man. Yeah, you know, lacking empirical verification. Well, I guess it would depend on your definition of verification. It depend on your definition of evidence or whatever else. But the scientific community has all agreed that evolution is a fact, and we didn't need any of the bones that we found in the ground to verify it. All we needed was an understanding of gene duplication, mutation, and selection. That's all we need. That is all we need. Basic understanding of this stuff. But, oh my God, is this a strange website, dude. Strange website. Due to the paradigm shift this website represents, the paradigm shift... The information within may be intellectually stimulating and emotionally disturbing to your present worldview. If you like riding the roller coaster of academic freedom, this is the site for you. I bet. I bet it is. If you find yourself getting a little queasy or overwhelmed, we suggest reviewing just one subject today until you get used to it. And they have a store, an omniology store. Wow. Okay, let's look at the Omniology store. It's not loading. Honestly, I don't think I trust this website at all. I'm not even going to go there. The, the store seems to be down and untrustworthy. New Man and Dino Track, definition of Omniology, contents page. Okay, let's click the contents page. What's this? Oh, my God, what a ridiculous website. Dinosaur Skin. Yeah, dinosaurs had feathers, by the by. I, I'm sure... My audience is probably aware of that, but the Jurassic Park depiction is inaccurate, we've discovered even recently. 
This is strange, dude. This is so, so strange. Uh, let's look at another. New Man and Dino Tracks. Wow, this is odd. In the book of Genesis, the Bible teaches that the earth is about 6,000 years old, and there was a great flood which dramatically affected... Used E-F-F-E-C-T-E-D. It's actually A-F-F-E-C-T-E-D. Dramatically affected the geology of the world. For an excellent resource on why the Earth is not 4.54 billion years old and why uniformitarian geology and radiometric dating methods are unreliable. They aren't. They aren't unreliable. See How Old is the Earth by Dr. Jonathan Sarfati. Who is Jonathan Sarfati? I'm going down a rabbit hole right now, guys. Jonathan Sarfati is a young Earth creationist who writes articles for Creation Ministries International, a nonprofit Christian apologetics ministry. He has a PhD in chemistry and was New Zealand national chess champion in 1987 and 88, supposedly. Wow. That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay, so as I was saying, his source is omniology. Omniology. That's his source. Really. Dude's source for this is omniology.com. That is as bad as GeoCities as a source. No joke. Jesus Christ, dude. What, what are we watching right now? Lucy's knee angled off to the side. The femur angled. And Donald said, see, that proves she's becoming a human. No. Any monkey that climbs trees has an angled femur. What he found was a tree-climbing monkey. Uh, once again, I mean, dude's sources for this stuff is omniology.com. No reason to believe literally one word out of this guy's mouth right now. It's not you know, the saddest part about this is the fact that this aired on television. Live, real TV. Broadcast on TV. You can find this seminar series listed on IMDb. This is real. Kids sat there Saturday morning watching this show, watching this seminar series because their parents wanted them to. No joke. I'd rather trust Wikipedia than Omniology. At least Wikipedia provides primary sources to back up their pages, lol. Absolutely, they do. Wikipedia isn't perfect. It can be edited by anybody, but it is a perfect source aggregation uh, website. Wikipedia is perfect for source aggregation. What he found was a tree climbing monkey. It's not proof it's becoming a human. He said, well, the bones are slightly bigger than a regular ape. Well, that's true. It doesn't prove it's becoming a human. The bones of a Clydesdale are slightly bigger than a regular horse. It doesn't prove it's becoming a truck, for heaven's sake. Like I said, like, here's the problem. Kent Hovind needs to explain cavemen, quote unquote, or old, you know, old versions of humans like Cro-Magnon, Australopithecine, uh, Africanus, and all the other things. He needs to explain this stuff. We don't need to explain this stuff because we don't need it to prove evolution is a fact. We've already proven evolution is a fact through gene duplication, uh, selection, and mutation. That's all we need. We don't need Cro-Magnon or my favorite, per my personal favorite homo, which is Heidelbergensis, or any of them. We don't need any of this. But Kent Hovind here needs to disprove their existence for his crackpot conspiracy theory to be correct. That's why he's attacking, quote unquote, cavemen relentlessly and failing miserably. Okay. What he found was a heavy duty chimpanzee and probably the pre-flood chimpanzees and everything was probably more heavy duty. If they're living longer, much healthier. That's all he found. There are big horses and little horses today, by the way. St. Louis Zoo. Yeah, there's a difference between a baby and, a, and an adult, and we can tell the differences between them. There's no surprise that we would find, like, little horses, but we can tell which ones are babies and adults. The interesting thing about horses, the thing that I personally find most fascinating about horses, is the fact that they started out really, really tiny. They were, like, 14 inches tall at one point, horses were. Like, ancient horses. 
were 14 inches tall. Horses were approximately the size of a fox, 250 to 450 millimeters in height. I'm looking for a chart. Hang on. This is a chart of horse sizes throughout the generations. Now they're about 1.6 meters, which is about five point uh, five and a quarter feet, roughly. Uh, let's see, eight million years ago, they were about 1.25 meters, which is about four feet tall, roughly, give or take. Uh, 15 million years ago, they were one meter, which is about three feet. 35 million years ago, horses were about 0.6 meters, which is about two feet tall. And then 50 million years ago, they were 0.4 feet tall, or 0.4 meters tall, which is about 1.3, one and a third feet tall. That is a tiny little guy right there. They were little itty bitty fellas. And I have to imagine they were super ultra mega giga cute back then and not rideable sadly uh but anyway point is horses eventually grew over the years um this is all verifiable fact we can we know this without a shadow of a doubt we have verified this information it was not babies anyway kent hovind has a lot of stuff that he has to discredit and disprove uh but you know even if horses even if we never did find ancient horses that were significantly smaller or different sizes. Even if we never did find the bones of ancient humans or any of that stuff, it wouldn't matter. We don't need it to prove evolution to be the fact that it is. All we need is gene duplication, mutations, and selection. That's it. Put human feet on their Lucy display at one. Uh, hang on, let me rewind. Uh, there are big horses and little horses today, by the way. St. Louis Zoo put human feet on their Lucy display. Not one foot bone or hand bone was found. Not one. Yeah, I don't know how true any of that is, but okay, let's continue. Every other australopithecine that's been found has curled toes. Professor Menton at Washington University said this. Oh, wow, isn't that interesting? He admitted to finding other australopithecine. How about that? So there are other australopithecine. Weird, because he was just giving us the impression that Lucy was literally the only one that's ever been found. Statue is a complete myth. Professor Menton at Washington University said the statue is a complete misrepresentation. That's a big fancy word for lie. What was his source on that? Did he have a source on that one? Like on the claim that they gave Lucy feet at this zoo or whatever? St. Louis Zoo has Lucy on display with human feet and hands. No feet or hand bones were ever found. The purpose of the display is not for education, but for indoctrination. Uh, do you have any proof that this happened? Like, is there a source on that, or are you just claiming it? I haven't seen anything about that. Bruce Elkar's Zoo Director of Education, St. Louis Post-Dispatch, July 22, 1996. Page 1 is his resource on this. The statue's complete misrepresentation. Let's just look this one up. St. Louis Zoo Lucy Feet. Uh, wow. The only references to this that I can find are creationist websites like Answers in Genesis. I'm not seeing any evidence that this actually happened. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. I mean, I'm willing to believe that if it's true, but I'm not seeing any evidence that they depicted it this way or whatever. I I'm sorry, I just don't trust you, Kent. I feel that I'm justified in not trusting a word out of your mouth at this point. I, I, prefer, I prefer smaller words. It's a lie. The zoo director said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. We cannot be updating every exhibit based- Wait, did it just, what happened? Let me step back a few seconds. Words. It's a lie. The zoo director said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. We cannot be updating every exhibit based on every new piece of evidence. We look at the overall exhibit and the impression it creates, and we think this impression it creates is correct. Yeah, I have no idea what he's talking about. I don't know if this is even an actual quote from the guy or any of that stuff. Uh, either way, I don't even know that this is true. I couldn't find any sources to indicate to me that this is actually true. Um, so I, I'm very suspicious of Kent.
Uh, Bruce, are you telling me you would lie to kids coming through your zoo just to get an impression across to them that evolution is true? You mean your theory is more important than the facts? It's exactly correct. Um, Kent is obviously not really understanding the difference between theory and facts or doesn't understand what a theory is, a scientific theory. A scientific theory is the pinnacle of scientific research. It's an overarching explanation. It takes the facts. A theory will take facts, compile them, and explain them in an overarching framework, basically, is what it is. And from that theory, we derive laws. That's what a scientific theory is. He loves conflating the colloquial definition of theory with the scientific one. It's just a theory is a common saying. Uh, in fact, it's something that one of my psychology professors said. It's just a theory. That pissed me off so much, I lost my shit on her. Anyway, theories are well understood, strong frameworks that describe the facts in a scientific context. So when you call it evolutionary theory, it is an incredibly well understood set of facts.